Hello everyone! Welcome back to this channel. The lecture that I'm going to share with you this time is on eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. This topic is basic to subjects like zoology, botany, cell and molecular biology, and microbiology. So I hope this lecture will help you. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will get updated of our new uploads. Before we can move forward, we need to know what is a cell. First, a cell is the basic unit of all the living things. Who you are today has been determined because of two cells that came together inside your mother's womb. The two cells containing all of your genetic information united to begin making new life. So cells divided and then differentiated into other cells with specific roles or function. That led to the formation of the body's numerous body organs, organ systems, blood, blood vessels, bone, tissue, and skin. As an adult, you are comprised, no, not just you, but we are comprised of trillions of cells. Second, organisms can be classified as either unicellular. It means that they are made of one cell only, such as the bacteria and the protist like amoeba. Okay. Or multicellular. It means that they are made of many cells such as the plants and animals, including us human beings. Looking back in the history, because of his successful use of microscope, Robert Hooke was the first one to have a close look of a cell. His description of these cells was published in the book Micrographia. One observation was from very thin slices of bottle cork as shown in this figure. So this is a microscopic image. However, the cell observed by Hook gave no indication of the nucleus and other organelles found in most living cells. In 1674, a live cell was observed by Anton van Leeuwenhoek, the very first successful effort to do such. Anton van Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch businessman and a contemporary of Robert Hooke. He used his own monocular microscope and was the first person to observe bacteria and protozoa under the microscope. So, Leeuwenhoek is known to have made over 500 microscopes in which fewer than 10 have survived to the present day. So, one of the examples of his microscope is shown in this figure. So, I don't really understand how this is a microscope or um, how to use this. But anyway, this is Leeuwenhoek's microscope. Leeuwenhoek's skill at grinding lenses together with his naturally accurate eyesight and great care in adjusting the lighting when he, where he worked enabled him to build microscopes that magnified over 200 times with clearer and brighter images than any of his colleagues during his time. I think this is the reason why he was given the name Father of Microscopy. In 1836, Theodore Swan and Matthias Leyden propose the cell theory which holds that 1. The cell is the unit of structure, physiology, and organization in living things. 2. The cell retains a dual existence as a distinct entity and a building block in the construction of organisms. And 3. Cells form by free cell formation or spontaneous generation. But in 1838, uh, Matthias Sladen proposed that plants are made up of cells. In 1839, Theodore Swan also proposed that animals are made of cells. In 1855, the third doctrine of Swan and Sladen 
that was the spontaneous generation, that means the cells formed by free cell formation, was proven wrong by Rudolf Virchow. In this year, he formally enunciated in his powerful dictum that omnicellula is cellula, meaning or translated as all cells only arise from pre-existing cells. All these things give rise to the formulation of what we call now the cell theory. So, the cell theory encompasses the confirmed discoveries that all scientists believe to be true about cells. That is, 1. Cells are the basic unit of life. 2. All living things are made of cells. 3. New cells are produced from pre-existing cells. Now, cells fall into one of the two categories. So, the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. And that's it. Every organism on the planet can be put into one of these two categories, including us humans. So, where do we belong? Of course, we belong to the eukaryotic group. Once the electron microscope became widely available, Biologists were able to examine the internal structure of a wide variety of cells. It became apparent from these studies that there are two basic classes of cells. So, the prokaryotic here. Pro means before. Karyon means nucleus. And we also have the eukaryotic. U means true and karyon means nucleus. So, the structurally simpler prokaryotic cells include the single-celled organisms of the domains bacteria and archaea, whereas the structurally more complex eukaryotic cells include plants and animals, protists, and fungi. Now we have a closer look at the structure of these two cells. Here is the prokaryote and here is the eukaryote. So what do you notice? What are the distinguishing characteristics of each cell or each type of cell, the prokaryote and the eukaryote? So actually, both of them, they do have their own parts. Um, we call them the organelles or the cell organelles in the cell that performs a specific functions that helps the cell maintain homeostasis or a state of balance. So, what are actually the differences and similarities that we see in these two? So, what are the differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells? So, in here we can see that Prokaryotic cells are smaller compared to the eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are always unicellular. So, if you remember our example here, are the bacteria, they are always unicellular. For prokaryotic, they can be unicellular sometimes but most often multicellular. So, for prokaryotic cells, they don't have nucleus and there is no membrane-bound organelles. So if they don't have nucleus, what do they have? They have what we call the nucleoid. On the other hand, eukaryotic cells always have nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. For prokaryotic cells, DNA is circular and it can be free-floating DNA, floating in the cytoplasm. For eukaryotic cells, DNA is linear and associated with proteins to form chromatin. Um, prokaryotic cells do have smaller ribosomes, but the eukaryotic cells do have uh, larger ribosomes. For prokaryotic cells, their cell walls are made of peptidoglycan. Okay, peptidoglycan. But the cell wall of the eukaryotic cells are made out of cellulose. Okay. 
When it comes to cell division, prokaryotic cells divide by binary fission. But the eukaryotic cells divide by mitosis or meiosis. And then, reproduction for the prokaryotic cells is always asexual. But for eukaryotic cells, it can be both. It can either be asexual or sexual. But what about the similarities between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells? So here is the list. First, they both contain all four biomolecules. These are the lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. They both have ribosomes. They have DNA. They have similar metabolism. They can be unicellular and have cell or plasma membranes or cell wall. Now here are the examples of prokaryotic cells. As you can see, our examples here are the different shapes of bacterial cell. So we have the rounded one or the cocci, the rod shape or what we call the bacilli, and the spiral which includes the vibrio, the spirilla, and the spirochetes. Here now are the examples of unicellular eukaryotic cell. So we have from the group of protists, we have the paramecium here. So sometimes this is called the sleeper-like animal. The amoeba and the euglena. If we try and look at these uh, unicellular eukaryotes under microscope, you will see that they look like this. So this is the paramecium, this is the amoeba, and the euglena. Here are our examples of multicellular eukaryotes. What you can see in this photo in here are inner cheek cells of human beings. Down here, these are cells of the onion. And of course, you can see here the different examples of multicellular eukaryotes. So here are the insects, okay? So these are also uh, belonging to the kingdom animalia, including of course this uh, primate and the baby. And we have also here an example of, of plants from the kingdom, uh, plantae. And here is the mushroom from the kingdom fungi, all of which are multicellular eukaryotes. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you got something from this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Okay, so until our next video upload. Bye for now!